What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades but today on Baz on Blades we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about jewelry and this is something that you do not see or hear talked about that often in our community but jewelry is very present in the knife and everyday carry community. Uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with companies like Steel Flame and Starling Gear. These companies are very well known. They're high-end designer companies that sell rings and pendants and uh, dress-up parts for knives. Um, you know, you're talking about pieces that co can cost in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Uh, you see materials in jewelry that circulates around uh, the knife and everyday carry community and it can range from uh, paracord to sterling silver, titanium, copper, bronze. Um, you know there really is a lot of jewelry going on in our community. I'm surprised it doesn't get talked about any more than it does. So I thought I would do, go real quick through a few pieces that I have in some different types uh, design types and um, dress levels and material types and whatnot and these are just pieces that I've picked up over the years um, that I enjoy wearing sometimes uh, typically I don't wear jewelry every day other than a watch and uh, you know I've, I've got to dress up you know Baz on blades dressed up for a Saturday night he might put on a piece of jewelry or two just to uh, look a little more impressive than he usually does but uh, what we're going to do we're going to start out here let's start out with some paracord I've got a couple of pieces here this is a paracord bracelets I've got one store-bought bracelet very well made uh, I honestly I couldn't tell you who made this bracelet there's literally 10 15 million different little private companies that do paracord that you can buy through uh, different knife retailers and whatnot. I picked this up at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and I can't remember who it is and there's no maker's mark on it or anything but that's an OD in black. It's a not, nice tight weave. A good example of a piece of paracord jewelry in a bracelet form. Uh, the next piece here is a little bigger and bulkier and a different color. Now this is made by a private individual, an amateur, I actually found this bracelet uh, at where I used to work, turned it in, you know, lost and found, nobody ever claimed it, so I kept it because uh, I like the colors, the blue and the black. Uh, it's not the best made, you know, I mean, to pull this other piece back over here, you can look at the difference in the weaves. This is extremely tight and even. Uh, this is uh, not tight and even, but this is pretty bulky. There's a lot of paracord in there. If I ever needed paracord uh, and I had this piece on me, it would be a good, you know, emergency last ditch thing. And that's what these paracord bracelets were originally designed as, sort of a way to carry some extra paracord in case you needed it in an emergency situation. All right, the next thing... I want to go into, say, some copper and bronze. Everybody knows within our community there's a lot of love for copper and a lot of love for bronze. These materials are easy to work with, easy to stylize. They can take on radically different looks due to different patina techniques. Um, you know, they're just really, really predominant all the way from knife handle scales to flashlights and into jewelry as we're going to show here. The first thing I'm going to show, uh, this is a piece that I bought actually at my local flea market. It is a Chinese coin, a cast bronze coin. Uh, there are just literally probably millions of these coins out there in the world. They're not really worth anything, but they're sort of cool. They're cast bronze. They're different looking. Um, they always have a great patina on it. You can see this. It is a fabulous looking piece as far as the patina goes on it. Um, I think this coin dates somewhere between uh, 1200 and 1500, so it's fairly old. Um, 
and and you get these for a few dollars guys it's on a cord with a dot, double knot sort of draw on it to adjust for size but it is bronze it does carry a cool patina on it so it fits in this sort of world that we live in the next piece i want to show you is a custom piece and this is made by brian cornett of devil dog designs d3 and you can find brian and devil dog designs on facebook he is a custom knife maker and he makes some uh, pry tools and some small jewelry like this and this is a copper dog tag this is one of his double tap dog tags and i'm sure you can see why we'll take a good look at it. it's like it's been shot a couple of times hence the double tap name uh, the center is in a hammered finish uh, it is darkly patinaed and then you know sort of left with the natural copper look around the edge and you can see that it has darkened and patinaed over time uh, this is a well-made item. It wasn't too awful expensive. It's a good example of how you can get into custom jewelry for not too much. Uh, you can look up Devil Dog Designs on uh, Facebook. And Brian Cornett is a really nice guy. I've talked to him often, and he's a well-respected individual. Another piece, another custom jewelry piece that's in copper and bronze and this is one that I picked up fairly recently. This is by Ted Reyes. Uh, you can find Ted Reyes on Instagram. Uh, T Reyes 54 is his ID on Instagram. And he does some great looking work in copper and brass. He does some bead work also. Uh, this is a fabulous piece. And um, one eighth inch thick copper with a bronze applied a soldered on uh, secondary sort of detail cross on it big old heavy copper ring and uh, this is a big piece guys it is uh, nearly two inches tall by an inch and a half wide and i don't know what it weighs let's see what this thing weighs we'll get the scale going here real quick uh 26 grams 26 grams guys so it's got some presence and weight and like I say, it's pretty sizable. I've got this on a five millimeter uh, braided leather cord here that I got off of uh, eBay or somewhere, guys. And uh, you know what? I really, really like this piece right here. The, the workmanship is very good. It's very rugged. The patina on it was very attractive. It, it wears well. It's got great weight and size and presence. Another example of something you can get in the custom world for not too much money. So be able, uh, be sure to look up uh, Ted Reyes, uh, which is T Reyes 54, T R E Y E S 54 on Instagram. All right, now the next thing I want to talk about is titanium. I love titanium, um, I just love titanium. It's super lightweight. It's just a um, utilitarian type of metal to me. And I tend to be more utilitarian than I do fancy smancy any day of the week. But titanium can be polished up and look a little fancier. The first thing we're going to look at <clears throat> is I've got here a Radops skull pendant. Now, Radops is a company that's out of South Korea. They do custom knives and pendants and impact tools. Um, you can check them out on uh, online at radops.com. That's R-A-I-D-O-P-S dot com. Uh, Kim is the guy that is in charge there. Uh, really nice guy. His product is not too awful expensive. These pendants are like $54 and then shipped. And it's, you know, probably about, if I remember, it was $76 shipped from South Korea. Didn't only took a couple of weeks to get it. And it is very well made. This is super heavy stock right here. Look at this. This is 8 millimeter or uh, 310 thousandths thick. Uh, super heavy duty this is available in different finishes you can get a <clears throat> matte finish with flame work sort of like the lock side of a strider smf or smg 
This one is in sort of a, a bright finish on the flats. And then you can see the reflection of the color in the grinds where it is sort of heat anodized in the grinds uh, from the actual grind work itself. Very well made piece. You do not see very many of these out there. Uh, in addition, I've got some custom chain mail here in titanium. And I do have a matching bracelet in this. Uh, now I had these pieces, these two chains made from a maker that uh, uh, posts on the usual suspect network. Uh, his name is Patrick Ober and his screen name is Armorer 4, the number 4. Um, and this is quite possibly the finest chain mail that I've ever seen. I'm going to get up super close right here and see if I can't show you. Look on this link right here. Okay, on this ring right here. Do you see the joiner on it? That is super tight, guys. This is extremely high quality, well made custom chain mail work. And his prices are pretty decent. Um, now, I haven't talked to the guy in years. I had these chains made years ago, probably about 2009. But I mean, look at how tight that work is right there, guys. Uh, and, you know, of course, I've got two different pieces from him here. And it's just so finely made. I mean, look at that joiner on that link where it's butted together. That's really good, guys, as far as chain mail goes. And, uh, you know, that's a good example of some custom work in titanium there. And I wear this a lot because it's not uh, too awful dressy. It gives me that sort of utilitarian gray look, and I love that. Now, titanium can also be polished up. And for more fancy smancy days... I've got this bracelet right here, and I bought this online. Honestly, I can't remember. Uh, actually, this was a gift. Uh, it was a gift from my ex fiance And I can't remember where she got it. I'll try to find that, guys, uh, in case anybody's interested. And it's sort of wide, and, you know, it's got that polished look. It's super lightweight. I love this. It lets me get a little dressier with titanium because it's polished then on top of that <clears throat> i like to wear a ring on my right hand and i typically i wear just bands and a lot of people would identify these as a wedding band but that's not what i wear them as i wear them on my right hand uh, because i like sort of a small band and these are in titanium and you can get a titanium ring really cheap, guys. I mean, for like 20 bucks for just a band like this in polished titanium. Uh, this one is polished titanium with cubic zirconia channel set stones in it. And uh, they're super lightweight. I mean, they're super lightweight. Both of them comfort fit interiors. And titanium, to me, has a tendency to as almost as soon as you slip it on it instantly warms up to your body temperature and it feels really really good guys i mean i love 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 titanium there's no doubt about that now the next thing i want to get into <clears throat> we're going to do some skull jewelry everybody knows skull jewelry uh, is really popular in this community and has been for a while and that's sort of a crossover from the biker world, the rock star world, quote unquote. And uh, I don't wear a lot of skull jewelry, but I do have a few pieces. Now I've got one ring here that is a half skull with a piercing on it, sort of like an earring type of piercing. And this is a designer piece out of Japan. And I think I got this through the website Skulls and Roses. And it's a Guillaume. Uh, design piece out of Japan. Uh, this one in a half skull, and it's a solid skull too. It's not hollow back. And we're looking at 23 grams of sterling silver on that. It's very, very comfortable to wear. Good looking ring. It doesn't overpower as far as the look goes. And then you've got this uh, detail on the side here with this piercing. 
uh, that sort of stands out. I love that ring. And <clears throat> the next ring that I've got is a custom piece. Uh, this is a one of a kind. There is only one on the face of this planet. Uh, this is made by a custom jeweler that goes by the initials of JC. And no, I'm sorry, I do not know how to get a hold of him. I have tried to contact him and <clears throat> I think he's just, he's out of jewelry making. Uh, but this one is in Argentium silver, which is a higher grade of jewelry silver than just sterling silver. This was hand carved. I actually have photos of the wax carving that this guy made, JC made, in order to mold this ring. Uh, it is beautiful, big, beautiful, solid argentium silver. Weight wise, we're looking at 35 grams there. So it's got some nice heft to it. Got some garnet for the eyes for a little pop of color. And uh, I got to tell you guys, this is an impressive looking ring right here uh, on the hand. It is an impressive looking ring. Um, I'm to get this standpoint here, this view. I'm sorry, guys. It is big and it is bad and it is unique. And um, <clears throat> this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Look at the detail on it. That's hand carved, guys. This guy did a lost wax method of casting where you do a wax sculpture and then you do a mold around it and then you melt the wax out and then that leaves your mold to cast your silver. Uh, it's just very, very good looking work, very detailed. Um, another piece in skull jewelry that I have is... Uh, a pendant that I don't have on a chain right now that I'll probably put on a, uh, a braided leather like this piece right here. Um, but this is a designer piece. It's from a design group called Mad Angels. And I tried to look those guys up today. They used to have a Facebook page, but they are no longer active. And I think this design group is now defunct, uh, no longer active. Um, and I got this from a place called Silver Alchemy, I think. Weight-wise on that, sterling silver, you're looking at 31 grams on that. Uh, it's a big piece, designer piece. There's your markings on it. And it's got the multiple piercings all over it, and I got it to wear with, you know, this piece right here. Um, you know, it's sort of at, put them together because they've got that piercing look. Now, uh, <clears throat> the last piece that I've got is actually a really inexpensive piece that I thought had sort of a neat look to it and sort of a shiny finish. And that's this link bracelet that I got here. And this is actually available at Walmart. It's stainless steel that is polished. Uh, it's, it's nice and detailed. Even the clasp is detailed on it. Um, it gives you that link chain look with the skulls. <clears throat> nice detail in 360 degrees around on it. Uh, it's actually very well made and not too expensive, I don't think. It's less than 50 bucks as far as I remember. And that's at Walmart, guys. Um, and then you can see here, that's the look that's going to be on the wrist right there. Not too bad, guys. Not too bad. <clears throat> now, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, something that may appeal to all of us, and that is watches. I like watches. Watches are expensive. Uh, it's very easy to spend three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars, two, five thousand dollars. I mean, and way up. There's watches out there that are a hundred thousand dollars each. Um, and, I mean, watches can be crazy, but I'd like everything else that I have in my collection, I try to pick the best thing that I can within a price range and sort of a type that I want. Uh, one of my likes is dive watches. And pretty much the go-to entry-level serious dive watch is the Seiko Monster. 
And this is an original generation monster. They're in a second generation now. This is an automatic, uh, which means it doesn't take a battery. You don't wind it. It's got a pendulum in the back that as you move around during the day, that pendulum rotates and it winds the watch. Uh, as you can see, it's a, a true automatic, sweep second hand, uh, day and date. Uh, the Seiko Monster is available in the $200 to $250 range. These watches are understood to have about the best loom, luminosity, on the hands that you will ever see. And I'm going to charge this one just a few seconds of charge for this one right here. And then I'll show it to you guys. And remember, we're up under... Uh, professional studio lighting here at Bazon Blades now. Uh, I've got two big studio lights on either side of my table here. And so we've got a lot of light going on in this. This is in the daytime under this studio lighting. Uh, it is a very, very bright loom. Uh, these are accurate watches. Uh, you've got stainless steel build with brushed outer surface here, polished on the sides. Uh, I actually use this watch as more of a dressy watch. Um, I do have a dress watch that's an ESQ, a Swiss watch in the Movado uh, sort of museum vein of design style, uh, but I didn't pull it out for this. I wanted a more you know, manly type of stuff here. Uh, but for my dive watch, this is what I've got. They're a very uh, well-respected model around the $200 to $250 range. Uh, a great way to get into a true heavy-duty built dive watch and an automatic to boot. The next thing, well, you just can't go wrong with a Casio G-Shock. Uh, of course, everybody knows about the Casio G-Shock. I remember when these watches were introduced to the world when I was younger. A huge just ripple throughout the watch world. This was something so radically different than anything offered anywhere in the world. Of course, G-Shocks are tough. They're full of features. This is the Mudman model. Uh, you can get these for $120, I believe. Um, it is sort of an upper mid-range, not up into the professional models. Like, there's a version of this called the Mud Master, uh, their Master Series. And I think it's probably about $300, if I'm, if I'm remembering right. I'm not sure. But for about $120, you've got a big, chunky G-Shock build. Um, this has got a uh, built-in compass and built-in thermometer and built-in the blue EL backlight, uh, world time stopwatch, blah, blah, blah. All of these things that G-Shocks have. And uh, this one is solar also. The face of it has the built-in solar panel. Um, so all you got to do is throw some light at it, guys, and you just never have to worry about it. And that's the great thing about G-Shock. You can beat on one of these things all day, every day, and they'll get scratched up, but they will just keep on running. Uh, and you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. That's the great thing in my collection overall. You don't have to spend a lot of money on most of this stuff. Now, you can spend a lot of money on it, but you don't have to. The last watch that I've got here is what you call a homage watch. And uh, this is a basically a copy of the U-Boat brand Flight Deck Chronograph. This is a big 50 millimeter uh, chronograph, meaning the case is 50 millimeters wide, and it's probably 16 millimeters deep. This is a big old watch, guys. I mean, it's a big, big watch. And I noticed when I pulled this one out, my battery had gone dead in it. It's a quartz movement. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a battery put in this. But you may recognize this style of watch. If you watch the Expandables movie, this is the watch that Sylvester Stallone was wearing. He was wearing a U-boat, a 50 millimeter U-boat. And those watches, depending on what you get, whether in stainless steel or titanium or what uh, style, model you get they can be fifteen hundred to forty five hundred dollars 
they're expensive watches. This one, this Parnas version, uh, with the quartz movement, you can get for about a hundred dollars. Uh, you'll have to order it out of China, but uh, it's well made, guys. It's like huge. I mean, look at how thick that thing is. We'll bring that G-Shock back out here. All right, look at it. It's bigger than that G-Shock, guys. Come on. That's a big old honk of damn stainless steel right there. When you wear this on your your arm, you know it's there. Uh, this is like that big 7 or 8 ounce folder that you put in your pocket. You're not going to forget that it's there. Um, <clears throat> and it's a cool design. It's got a left-hand stem on it with the uh, screw-off cap you see in a lot of uh, Russian and German watches, military-style watches. Um, again, a chronograph. It's available in a non-chronograph also. That just happens to be the version I got. But, um, <clears throat> you know, guys, this, this whole jewelry thing, I think is part of the world that we live in, this, this knife world. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. This knife world that we're in, we sometimes uh, get this kind of attitude, this manly type of attitude, that, um, you know, we may not want to wear jewelry. Jewelry is sort of for, you know, girly guys or whatever. But I think we've got some examples right here, guys, that show you that, uh, you know, any gentleman can slap some jewelry on and still look manly. Um, that's important in our little world. And it's important to all manly men anyway. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing this. It's something I just thought I'd do to break out of the mold a little bit, do something different. Um, I will try to put any information I can in the description, um, names and email, or not email addresses, but web addresses and whatnot for these people that do the custom work and whatever. But uh, as always, Thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.